Well, here in Germany, the far-right Alternative for Germany party, or AFD, has seen its popularity surge in recent weeks. The party's poll numbers have risen to a historical high. Looking at the latest Infratest DIMAP survey, the AFD is polling in second place behind the main opposition conservative CDU-CSU. 20% of those polled say they would vote for the far-right party if a national election were held now. And that's more than for any of the three government parties. The poll boost comes despite sections of the AFD being seen by many experts as linked to extremist and anti-democratic circles. Germany's far-right is having a great summer. Support for the alternative for Germany is higher than ever before in their 10-year history. In the eastern state of Thuringia, one voter in three now backs the IFD. In June, for the first time, the party won executive power. It was only a local government official, yet the AFD is jubilant. But the AFD is not just another political party. Its members include many far-right extremists. And it is under observation by the intelligence services for allegedly undermining democracy. So what explains the success? The established parties do a terrible job and they are getting from bad to worse by the day, by the hour. They want to force people into a, a central planning, a central planning attitude and that's exaggerated and more and more people react to it. The AFD has always been successful with issues that increase fears. As is well known, we are living in times of multiple crises. There's quite a bit of fear out there. Fear of even more immigration, of refugees and other migrants. And then, of course, there's the fear of rising prices and the fear of an encroaching state. Fears drive people to seek an alternative. How should the established parties respond? So far, all have said that they will not cooperate with the AFD. Some politicians even talk about banning it. Chancellor Scholz has played down the threat. We have the phenomenon of right-wing populist parties in Scandinavia, the Netherlands, Austria and Germany. They exist elsewhere in the world as well, but that doesn't mean they have to become relevant and dominant, and that will not be the case here either. But those responses don't address the concerns that drive the support. I think it could make even more people vote for them. For me, what's important and what I would say this to Mr. Scholz, prevent blockage, clear the blockages and look to the future. In my opinion, the only way to turn this situation around is with good politics, by carefully refuting the AFD's claim that the state is weak. Federal and state governments have to show concrete action and not just abuse those who vote for the AFD. Meanwhile, the party believes its share of the vote will increase. We are prepared to deliver to the people what they deserve. That means straight policy, sober policy, no radicalism, to do the things which need to be done and to give up things which need to be given up. Given Germany's history, a far-right party and government responsibility is something all other parties in the Bundestag want to avoid at any cost. I heard you threaten that if you came to power you would clean up. We will tell you we will make sure that you never have responsibility in this country. Keep that in mind. That, however, is exactly what the AFD is aiming for. For the next federal election in 2025, they want to nominate a chancellor candidate. And to speak about the AFD's increasing strength, I'm uh, now joined by Ralf Stegner. He's a member of parliament for the Social Democrats, who will lead Germany's governing uh, coalition at the moment. Mr. Stegner, the AFD is now the second most popular party in the polls right now, even before your party. Doesn't that show the government, which is led by the SPD, is failing its voters? Well, I don't think so. Uh, of course, that's a threatening fact that we that they are so strong in the polls. Polls are not elections yet, but we have to do. I would say three things. One, we have heard in your report, is we have to do good policies and explain them to the people in clear language. Uh, good policies meaning addressing all those issues where you can uh, raise the fears, and they all they only exploit fears. That's their own. Uh, only uh, position. They don't have any solutions, they only have scapegoats. 
and they're talking about that. So that's first of all, that's the most important thing. But then, talking about how to deal with the crisis uh, we have. Are you taking the fears, uh, or is the government taking the fears of the population not seriously enough? I think we do, but we have still there's room for improvement. I would say, in terms of telling the people we need to change our energy policies, but we have to do it in a way that people with normal wages, with low income, are able to afford this. This is one thing. Second, we have to talk with the conservatives that they don't think that arousing right right-wing populism helps them in any way. It only helps the original, and those are the radicals. And the third, and that's the most difficult part, is. Uh, there is a saying, and we heard that in your report too, uh, that one should not uh, address the voters. I think we should, because one who is voting for a Nazi party votes for a Nazi party. And although I know that sp sp uh, sp um, uh, that is, is used by uh, the hardcore Nazis, uh, they want to have that right this way. But we have to make it more difficult for people to vote for a party that really wants to abolish democracy. And mm -hmm. given the German history, we really have a responsibility to do that. Uh, and with all the clearness that's, afford, uh, that's uh, necessary to do that. Now, when the AFD won its first local government election just a few weeks ago, you said it would go down in history as another day of shame. And that vote involved just 15,000 people supporting the AFD. Why such a strong reaction? Well, because we're not talking about political rivals. We're talking about people uh, that, who are in favor of uh, violence, who want to abolish uh, the rules of our constitution. Who wants to? Uh, they use uh, the freedom of speech and opinion, uh, which is given in our uh, constitution that we have. If they would have anything to say, people like us would be in prison. So, to make it very clear to the people, you cannot vote for Nazis, and they are uh, foes of democracy, uh, and we must be very clear about that. But again, we will only be successful in that if our own policies are uh, executed in a way that we uh, talk to the people's uh, fears and uh, the needs that people, especially those with low income and normal income, have. Yeah, but how can the governing coalition do that? Well, of course, uh, if you look at Germany, you would say, given all the crises, corona, starting with the Ukrainian war, we've pretty, uh, it was a pretty good way how we got through the winter without mass uh, unemployment and all those things. We, we put a lot of money in programs to avoiding that and have done better than other neighbors have done. So uh, actually, the policies are not that bad. But we are three different parties, and there's a lot of conflict. And, and the public uh, view on, on, on the government could be better. So we, we have to improve uh, our professional work. That's one thing to do. And then be clear how we talk to the people, not in a technocratic way, as some colleagues do, but with a very clear way to address the people so that they know one doesn't vote for foes of democracy, never, nowhere, and for no reason. Mm. Now, all of Germany's mainstream parties currently rule out going into coalition uh, with the AfD. Now, if we look around in Europe, right-wing parties are sitting in governments all over the place. So do you think these floodgates against the AfD uh, will stand? Well, see, we have a different history. It's something totally different. Where we have right-wing extremism in Scandinavia or in the United States or uh, in France. Uh, in Germany, they, you look at the history of the last century and you see what, what was the consequence of that. Uh, the terror state of Hitler and uh, everything that went that came after that. So therefore, we cannot tolerate that there's anti-Semitism, there's violence against minorities, against uh, refugees, and uh, violence everywhere. And uh, we have to fight the force of democracy more early than other countries have to do that. Ralf Stegner there, member of the German parliament for the governing Social Democrats. Thank you very much. Thank you.